If you comb through the entire history of baseball, I'm talking Little League Baseball, high school, travel ball, Major League Baseball, baseball that's played overseas, this might be the most annoying at bat ever. I mean, he switched sides, what, five, six different times? How is that even allowed? What's up, everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. We have a lot to talk about today. Bryson Stott is the man of the hour in today's recap. The Red Sox, they're trying to get back into the win column and same for the Giants because San Francisco came into today's recap with a four-game losing streak. Hopefully it doesn't become five. Remember guys, if you're going to any sporting events or concerts anytime soon, use code fuzzy on SeatGeek to save yourself 20 bucks off your entire order. Now, before we talk about the games from yesterday, we have to talk about the update on the international draft. So the title MLB rejected a new rule. It was kind of easier to title that. It's not really a rule per se, but again, it would have been different. So we know that before teams were given certain amount of dollars to spend on international players. And that's how they got guys like Ioannis Cespedes, Shohei Otani, teams could bid and if they outbid they would get the services of those said players well they wanted to create a draft because apparently overseas it is strife with a lot of corruption so agencies and agents are signing kids at 12 13 years old and pretty much giving them pennies on the dollar but those kids need that money so they can give it to their family so that is the pro that these kids really need the money they're getting it from these agents but in return they're kind of getting hosed in the long run so the draft was trying to fix that but the players association and major league baseball they couldn't come to an agreement so it is going to stay status quo there will not be an international draft and one more thing to note about that the qualifying offer was attached to the international draft. So if the international draft was accepted, the qualifying offer would disappear. If you have no idea what the qualifying offer is, let's go back to 2013. The Yankees gave Nick Swisher a qualifying offer and he rejected that. So the Yankees are going to be able to get a draft pick from any team that Nick Swisher goes to. He went to Cleveland. They picked up... Aaron Judge with Cleveland's pick. So because the draft was rejected, the qualifying offer and draft compensation, they're staying. Also, one more note I do want to make about the international draft. Top prospect of the Guardians, George Valera, said that, hey, we don't want a draft because we don't have something like college to fall back on. So if we're not drafted, our career is pretty much done. So if you can sign for really cheap, even at 15, 16, 17 years old, they'll take that over an international draft. So that's kind of the bow that I want to put on this story. Now that we have all of the complicated things out the way, let's go ahead and talk about the games from yesterday. Tony Gons only came into this one with a cool 11-0 record on the season. But uh, yeah, he wasn't going to leave with a perfect record if Juan Soto had anything to say about that. But first, the Hernandezes, yes, plural, they had to do their thing as well. Yadiel Hernandez got all of this one for a 410-foot shot. And then Cesar Hernandez made it 2-1 to one on a little RBI single. And oh my god, Juan Soto chopped this baseball to space and it somehow stayed fair. So that's a 2 run triple for the 23 year old superstar and again let me know in the comments what do you make of this situation do we believe that Juan Soto is going to get traded a lot of owners are saying he won't be traded because of certain things but the other half has a good point they're saying he will get traded because if you did not know the Nationals are in the process of being sold and if you're the new owner you would rather have Juan Soto gone than having Juan Soto be the first move that you make as a new owner you do not want to have that you want to have a clean slate so I think that he is going to get moved there are really no other ways to say this but Bryson Stott single-handedly beat the World Series champs the Atlanta Braves. He got helped out a little bit by the baseball gods. He was gifted a free two-run double after this ball took a weird hop. Matt Olson is pretty good at first base, so definitely was not his fault in my opinion. Then, when the team needed him most, he clutched up. Bryson Stott with the tater tot. That lefty-lefty three-run bomb was the closest thing to a walk-off without it actually being a walk-off. And Sir Anthony Dominguez pitched a perfect ninth inning. So the season series between the Braves and the Phillies is now tied at four games apiece. The Braves have four wins. The Phillies have four wins. Do we think that the Phillies have enough to make a playoff push? Let me know. So we had a couple spankings yesterday and one of them was actually pretty surprising because the Tigers, yes, the all-time bad 2022 Tigers offense embarrassed the San Diego Padres of all teams. That's because Eric Haas deleted this baseball for a grand slam. He's hitting 320 with a 180 OPS plus over his last, let's just call it 20 games. The Candyman wanted in on the long ball action as well as Jamie pelted his eighth home run but I don't think he likes the number eight because he instantly ripped another two-run home run for his ninth home run of the year. And look at Miggy contributing as well. That is his fourth home run of the season. He has 506 for his career. Now, we just saw Eric Haas turn on a mistake pitch for a grand slam, and Jonathan India did much of the same, but I'll have to show that in just a second because Donnie Barrels, a.k.a. Donovan Solano, and Brandon Jury, they were at it again. Two RBIs for Solano, 
three on one swing for Brandon Drury. That is his 19th home run. He has 57 RBIs, so look for him to get moved before the deadline because I think he's on a one-year deal. They're definitely not going to keep him. But just like the Chaco Taco, Jonathan India discontinued this baseball for his first career Grand Slam. And we can't forget about Nick Lodolo, who carved it up for six shutout innings. He also punched out nine Marlins hitters. So in the span of a week, the Miami Marlins went from maybe being buyers at the deadline to possibly being big-time sellers. I would say that Garrett Cooper is the number one guy that I think is going to get traded on Miami. Two months ago, it would shock you to hear that the Royals had their easiest win of the year against the Angels, but knowing what we know now, this was no shocker. Zach Greinke turned in his best start of the year, throwing five scoreless innings with five strikeouts. Thor tried his best to keep the team within it, but Michael Taylor's RBI single in the sixth kind of broke the seal, and the Halos threw it all away on a bases loaded walk. Some poor defense and another RBI base hit from Michael Taylor. Also, almost forgot to show you this MJ Melendez bomb. He is a bad man. That is his 10th home run of the year. The Royals have quietly won three in a row. Another 7-0 game, only this one was an NL matchup. You have the Giants in Arizona. So you're thinking maybe the Giants can snap their streak. Yeah, nope. The younglings, Perdomo and Thomas, they slice a few baseballs to make it two to nothing. And Carson Kelly, along with Josh Rojas, they blow it open even more. I'm hoping that we can see 2021 and 2019 Carson Kelly here soon because that dude is an on-base machine. The Diamondbacks only needed one run, though, because Merrill Kelly was out of his mind. Eight scoreless versus a very solid team in the Giants. He didn't walk anyone, and he struck out seven. He has a 3.04 ERA. And I just want to mention Christian Walker singled home two. Look for him to maybe get traded. He has 22 home runs and a 112 OPS plus. Now, not the most exciting game from the Orioles as they didn't hit a single home run. But you know what? A win is a win. Okay, maybe I lied a little bit because that two run single from Mount Castle was actually pretty fun, mostly because Cedric Mullins was flying around third. He slid into home like a bat out of hell. Baltimore ends up with five and the Orioles bullpen ate Tampa Bay alive. So the Orioles gave Tampa Bay a little bit of their own medicine by getting carved up by a bullpen. So the Orioles are back to being 500 and if the Red Sox lose, the Orioles will be ahead of them in the wild card standings. Boston beat the Guardians 3-1. to one. Okay, next, moving on the range. Just kidding. Now listen, anytime Cleveland does anything where 3-1 is involved, it gives me 2016 flashbacks. So Zach Plesak wasn't awful, but he allowed a run early. There was an RBI single from Vasquez and then Verdugo grabbed the second run. Vasquez made it three runs and again it was a 3-1 ball game as Nick Pavetta shut it down. Six strikeouts and just under six innings. The Boston bullpen showed up. They struck out four over the final. Let's just call it three. You can't lose this game if you're Cleveland because if you're a Red Sox fan, you know that you basically had a triple-A lineup. Moving on over to the Rangers game. Now, I hope the Texas Rangers got the Mariners a card for Father's Day because Seattle has become their daddy. Cal Raleigh and Ty France, they both drive in an RBI. With Ty France's RBI coming on his 13th home run of the season, he's hitting 312 with 51 RBIs. They absolutely stole him from the Padres. Chris Flexen kept the Rangers at bay well until Adolis Garcia almost said Adolis is it Adolis or Adolis I legitimately do not know how it's pronounced I say it different almost every single recap he popped off again the dude is relentless but the Mariners do come away with a W we have a close one down in Wrigley Nico Horner has been very good this year that RBI single was him just getting started and Rafael Ortega launched a home run in the very next inning as Adrian Sampson did his absolute best to keep the Pirates from scoring he threw seven pretty solid innings he did allow two runs to score but obviously that means it's a tie game Game. And not so fast, Nico Horner says. His go-ahead double in the eighth raises his stat line to a 303 batting average with an almost 120 OPS plus while simultaneously playing a platinum defense. He has a sick 11 DRS at shortstop. Scott F. Force, I think that's how you say his name. I just found out he existed. He threw a clean ninth inning for his first ever save as the Cubs come away with the victory over the Pittsburgh Pirates. Two men won this next game. The first one, Elias Diaz. He had his sixth of the year in the third and Kyle Freeland took care of the rest. Kyle held the Brewers scoreless through seven and was finally able to rack up a bunch of strikeouts seven and in seven innings Daniel Bard closes it out for his 21st save but I want to talk about Freeland for a quick second because he has a 5.7 ERA at home and a 5.3 strikeouts per nine whereas on the road he has a three and a half ERA and a 7.3 strikeouts per nine so the course field effect again that is where pitchers go to die and last but not least who would have guessed if you had the A's beating the Astros in a shootout you should just bet on every single sports game forever because you have the I don't know you just have great baseball IQ, I guess. Tony Kemp always seems to play better against elite teams like the Astros, the Yankees. He is very annoying. He homers in the third and then drove home two on a double off of Jake Odorizzi. Also, there's no way this next guy isn't an Avenger or something. Sky Bolt. Yes, that's his real name. Sky Bolt smokes a massive two-run tater in the fifth 
Andrews collected his second RBI of the night later in the eighth, and maybe he's going to get shipped out as well. He's 34 years old. He has a 95 OPS plus, so he's not completely terrible, but he's older, and I want to see him on a playoff team, and he's 65 hits away from 2,000, so I want to see him get there. Well, everyone, that is going to do it for today's recap. Thank you all so much for watching. We are on the road to half a million subs, so if you've not hit that big red subscribe button, today is the day you should do so, and enjoy the web gems. Let it go. Swing and a miss. Throw down to second. There goes Soto on the 2-2. Bell shoots it down the line. Betts is there. He makes the catch. Triggers a throw back to first. And up the middle. Knocked down there by Lau. Throw to first. So that's Walsh over there. Season hit has to readjust. Goes over. Makes the play. You see him stop first of all. And then make it accurate. Count. A little squibber. Freed racing gloves. Flips to Olsen at the bag. And that'll end the inning. Morrell hits one to left, and Gamble dives and makes the catch. What a terrific play by Gamble. Uh, Gamble got a great jump. Full speed, full speed, full extension. Following that, they got back into their division. Ahmed Rosario, long throw, and he got the catcher in time. Out number two, a dynamite play by Ahmed Rosario. Doesn't get a lot of credit. Or publicity where his defense is concerned, but he knew he had the catcher running. Popped up mile high. Back comes Alfaro. And Alfaro dives to make the catch. Nice play by Jorge Alfaro. Ball in two strikes. Senzel out to left. De La Cruz back, reaching up and makes the catch. Which is enormous, but not here. Right back to Vogt. Knocked it down. Got the out at the plate. Rutschman undercut on the slide by Rayleigh. He is back up and at it. One, two pitches, a little pop up. Pinder over the shoulder, and he caught it.